Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are going to give a presentation on simulation best practices for medical devices, uh, uh, for design and development of medical devices. Um, <clears throat> ANSYS is spearheading the in silico medicine revolution by working across healthcare ecosystem of policymakers, regional regulators, industry leaders and leading academics. Our work is already having a significant impact. For example, our physics-based simulation solutions recently helped a leading North American medical device manufacturer shorten the time to approval and product launch by two years, also enabling them to reduce their cost of single regulatory submission by $10 million. Healthcare companies rely on the accuracy of uh, ANSYS comprehensive simulation portfolio because we work with both regulators and industry standards organizations to develop best practices for predicting medical device and medical equipment behavior on the bench when interacting with the human body. These models facilitate adaption and accelerate the regulatory approval process. Industries encounter significant challenges when delivering next generation medical device technologies. First and foremost is patient safety. Companies must ensure extreme reliability of products once they are released out onto the real world. This requirement is also strongly linked to assuring patient safety, which can be established by showing that the device conforms to requirements established through standards. Materials compliance tools are also used to demonstrate that the various materials components of a device that come into contact with the human tissues meet local policies. Decreasing product development times is a step that is typically accelerated by modeling and simulation. But now the industry is also looking into modeling and simulation to accelerate regulatory approval processes by reducing the time required to generate the device safety evidence and also providing additional evidence of device safety. Cost can also be reduced by reducing clinical trials, which is typically the most expensive element for bringing new devices to market. The cost of bench testing can also be reduced by minimizing number of tests through rapid prototyping. A few examples of the benefits include an increase in the accuracy of drug tar targeting to specific sites in the lung by up to 90% through the use of computational fluid dynamics and patient-specific lung geometries, knocking months off the typical testing time of hearing aids by incorporating modeling and simulation into development cycle, and a cost savings of $10 million by reducing the size of a clinical trial in part due to modeling and simulation. So now, how do we do it? The total product life cycle of a medical device includes invention and prototyping phases, evaluation in animals and humans, regulatory review and approval, and post-market monitoring. The use of computational modeling and simulation has traditionally been limited to this design phase to understand and optimize 
product performance. This grew to include the regulatory review phase when the US FDA formally recognized computational modeling and simulation as a source of evidence that could be used during the device approval. The advent of in silico trials, which are exploratory trials on the computer that reduce, refine, and replace clinical trials by making use of reliable computer models of patient characteristics in medical treatment and its deployment. This concept is now rapidly expanding the scope and opportunities for computational modeling and simulation. Stands. They're wire mesh tubes that are used to prop open an artery after plaque removal. The two primary types of stents are balloon expandable and shape memory using nitinol. Nitinol stents take advantage of their shape memory characteristics to maintain their shape after being deployed to the vessel wall. FEA enhances mechanical and elastina that can be used to model various elements of stand design, including stand deployment, stand expansion and contraction, and fatigue life of a stand. Blood pumps are used to circulate blood through a patient's cardiovascular system during medical procedures and as circulatory support when one or more of the heart chambers is failing. Computational fluid dynamics is used to understand the pressure flow performance of a pump as well as biocompatibility. There are many elements of biocompatibility. But in the context of ANSYS tools, this refers to the interaction between the flow environment and the blood cells. The key concerns are hemolysis, which is the potential for fluid shear stresses to damage blood cells, and thrombosis, which is the potential for the flow to cause blood clots. ANSYS has expertise in this area that can be used to provide predictions of these markers of biocompatibility. Dry powder inhalers are used to deliver asthma <clears throat> or other drugs to the lung surface. The primary engineering challenge is that a lot of the drug impacts the sidewalls of the inhaler and the patient's mouth. So the goal of engineering simulation is to generate a focused powder spray that delivers as much drug as possible to the patient's lungs. In addition, the airflow path is also analyzed to minimize the presence of flow recirculation and stagnation. The design of each dry powder inhaler is also customized for each new drug formulation. A combination of CFD along with particle tracking can help to ensure an effective design. The tissues in the vicinity of metal implants are prone to heating when a patient gets uh, an MRI. But metal implants can be designed to minimize this effect. Lab testing was traditionally performed to estimate the temperature rise, but now the regulators and the industry are moving to computational modeling. The answer solution consists of the combination of HFSS, 
and uh, uh, mechanical to and uh, HFSS calculates the high frequency fields and mechanical models the temperature rise due to those high frequency fields. One of our customers was even able to completely avoid bench testing to establish MRI safety of their spinal implant line, resulting in significant cost savings. Spinal interbody fusion devices are implants that replace degenerated spinal discs. Finite element analysis can be used along with patient specific models of spinal column to understand the interaction with a spinal implant and a patient specific solution. The implant design. <coughs> can be optimized for the patient uh, using topology optimization and then prepped and analyzed for compatibility with additive manufacturing using the additive suite of products from ANSYS. Compliance to industry test standards can also be confirmed. In this case, ASDM F2077 establishes the custom implant's ability to resist compression. So <clears throat> I'd like to switch over to a different presentation when we started talking about patient-specific implant <coughs> design. So uh, when we start talking about patient-specific implant design, we have developed methodology when, where uh, we can actually take activities of daily living for a patient and also scan that patient's bone structure. In, in this case, we can put in every single uh, bone ge uh, uh, geometry into our models and depending on <coughs> the activities of daily living we can actually uh, look into uh, the stresses in the bones the stresses in the implants and in this case we took a um, uh, this implant here and uh, in this case, we are also taking into account activities of daily living and also any lab conditions. Lab conditions may be uh, testing uh, or cycling. And we can take all this data and create a finite element mesh and put it through the optimizer and really optimize uh, the, uh, uh, the implant for that specific patient with their specific bone geometry and for their activities of daily living. We published a paper back in 2009 on this, where we uh, 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 disclosed the uh, information about the test conditions. In this case, we took this female person and um, uh, 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 and measured uh, uh, every single um, uh, geometry, and then created a model. And from the model, uh, we were able to extract the forces at any given point in time during either cycling or walking or any activities of daily living. And we looked at uh, three different thicknesses of this implant because the three different thicknesses gave different fatigue lives. Uh, as expected, the thicker um, 
specimen gave us the the largest uh, number of cycles to failure. Um, so <laughs> Uh, please keep in mind that this is a this animation is 18 times exaggerated. So this is not what the uh, what we actually see uh, for the broken bone. But uh, this animation here is to true scale, and you can actually see what's happening uh, as this person is cycling through uh, on a straight way. Uh, so the question for the FDA is, FDA says, you know, we would like to have a four point bending test for these type of simulations. Whereas the actual deformations we are seeing, the deformation as well as stresses that we are seeing from the test conditions are totally different. There is some torsional loads here and side loads. It has nothing to do with the four point banding test that's required by the FDA. So through this procedure, we can actually take into account activities of daily living, lab conditions, create muscular skeletal simulation and enhances, create the finite element simulation and put it through an optimizer and come up with an optimized implant for that specific patient. So I just wanted to take a side tour and talk about these um, patient specific implants. <laughs> Another critical challenge facing the medical device industry is the lack of clear guidelines describing the requirements for using modeling and simulation results with global regulatory agencies. ANSYS is therefore working with key policymakers in the US and around the world in an effort to establish frameworks that enable the utilization of modeling and simulation results in submission. Our efforts include collaborating with US FDA, participating in the developments of key standards, as well as becoming members of public-private partnerships. Through these collaborations and partnerships, ANSYS has been at the forefront of developing modeling and simulation best practices, which are now able to share with our customers to enable them to use modeling and simulation in regulatory filings. Materials information matters for all medical devices because materials technology is fundamental to their performance and viability. Therefore, the effective use of materials information is business critical. As examples, materials information is required not only for design decisions that have major consequences for product performance, but also for operational decisions in manufacturing to support the sales process in response to customers' inquiries, for regulatory compliance, and to enable informed purchasing. Yet many organizations have failed to develop a systematic approach to managing materials information, which is resulting in increased exposure to risk, higher development costs, and missed opportunities. For example, product engineers often lack access to the most accurate and up-to-date materials information. Having this sort of information can significantly mitigate the risk of a product recall when making design choices. The healthcare industry is now moving away from piecing together data from spreadsheets, handbooks, and or other ad hoc methods. And Grant MI is a certifying source of materials information for the entire organization.
So uh, this is uh, this brings us to the conclusion of this presentation. ANSYS is really the number one engineering simulation software out there. And uh, it's been in the market for over 50 years. It's really considered to be the gold standard for simulation solutions. So thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions, any comments, please uh, send us an email at info at ozoninc.com or visit our website www.ozoninc.com our headquarters in Sunnyvale, California. We look forward to hearing from you. All right. Thanks again and have a great day.